Welcome to video cast number two. As you all know, we are reading Elie Wiesel's uh, memoir titled Night, and we have just moved now into chapter four of that memoir. In the end of chapter three, Elie tells us that he and his father have moved to a new camp called Buna. Now, Buna is a portion of the Auschwitz complex, but it is a separate location um, from, for example, Birkenau or Auschwitz, uh, where Ellie started. So now they've moved into this camp, Buna, and Ellie and his father will be working. On page 47, as Ellie describes the camp, he says, The camp looked as though it had been through an epidemic, empty and dead. Only a few well-dressed inmates, well-dressed, were wandering between the blocks. And so we get the understanding that there's a lot less going on here in Buna than there was, for example, when Ellie arrived at Birkenau and bodies were burning and people were getting shot left and right. Um, and that in this case, um, you know, people may not be having a good time in, in life, uh, but at the same time, it's not uh, the everyday, day-to-day -day stress of, will I live today, will I not? So as uh, we move through the, the text, we learn um, kind of toward um, page 50 at the very beginning that Ellie is going to be assigned to um, an overseer that occasionally has fits of madness. And this guy's name is, is Idik. And the idea is that unless you stay out of his way when he gets angry, bad things can happen to you. Um, and so when we move now into um, around page uh, 51 to 52, um, or excuse me, 52 to 53, um, we... we um, get into a vignette that tells us a little bit more about Idik and Ellie's experience with him. Now, before I get into this, I just want to say um, that in chapter four, things are kind of all over the place. I think you guys might notice that um, there's some continuity, and it may be in, a, in, in um, just in that, that Ellie's experience was full of misfortunes. And so as we're reading all of these different what we call vignettes or stories within stories, um, we find out that there were some really difficult things that Ellie had to not just survive, but live through. Um, some of his experience, many of his experiences, um, just in the end, ended up being unfortunate. Um, things that didn't have to happen, um, but happened anyway. Um, so an, ex an example of that is here at the bottom of page 52, moving into 53 um, in chapter 4, where Ellie tells the story of his experience with... Um, uh, a young lady who was a French a French girl who was a prisoner with him, um, and, and, and how in some way he had to cross paths with, with Idik. He says, In the warehouse, I often worked next to a young French woman. We did not speak. She did not know German, and I did not understand French. I thought she looked Jewish, though she passed for Aryan. She was a forced labor inmate. One day, when Idik was venting his fury, I happened to cross his path. He threw himself on me like a wild beast, beating me in the chest, on my head, throwing me to the ground and picking me up again, crushing me with ever more violent blows, until I was covered in blood. As I bit my lips, in order not to howl with pain, he must have mistaken my silence for defiance, and so he continued to hit me harder and harder. Abruptly, he calmed down and sent me back to work as if nothing had happened, as if we had taken part in a game in which both roles were of equal importance. I dragged myself to a corner. I was aching all over. I felt a cool hand wiping the blood from my forehead. It was the French girl. She was smiling, her mournful smile, as she slipped me a crust of bread. She looked straight into my eyes. I knew she wanted to talk to me, but that she was paralyzed with fear. She remained like that for some time. And then her face lit up. And she said, in almost perfect German, Bite your lips, little brother. Don't cry. Keep your anger, your hate, for another day. For later. The day will come, but not now. Wait. Clench your teeth and wait. Many years later in Paris, 
I sat on the metro reading my newspaper. Across the aisle, a beautiful woman with dark hair and dreamy eyes. I had seen those eyes before. Madame, don't you recognize me? I don't know you, sir. In 1944, you were in Poland, in Buna, weren't you? Yes, but you worked in a depot, a warehouse for electrical parts? Yes, she said, looking troubled. And then, after a moment of silence, wait, I do remember. Heidek, the capo, the young Jewish boy, your sweet words. We left the metro together and sat down at a cafe terrace. We spent the whole evening reminiscing. Before parting, I said, may I ask one question? I know what it is. I am, am I Jewish? Yes, I am, from an observant family. During the occupation, I had false papers and passed as Aryan. That was how I was assigned to a forced labor unit. When they deported me to Germany, I eluded being sent to a concentration camp. At the depot, nobody knew that I spoke German. It would have aroused suspicion. It was imprudent of me to say those few words to you, but I knew that you would not betray me. So in this particular um, segment of the text, we learn uh, a little bit about Ellie's experience with um, those that oversaw him. He had some really rough experiences with his overseers, very rough. Um, but in this particular case, what I really like about this little vignette is that in the end, for once, even though it took years and years and years and years, um, Ellie does you know, have some closure to this one moment um, involving the young lady who eventually comforted him after his uh, rough time. Um, we are going to have a few more vignettes just on chapter four alone because they're, it's so disjointed and there are so many different parts. But I think that you can use this one to help you with some of your work. Hint, hint. Um, and so make sure that you are completing the chapter four assignment um, so that you can move on um, to the next chapter. Also, please remember that you will have a quiz this coming Thursday, um, and that you do need, do, you do need to be, goodness gracious, prepared for that, um, in enough time. Okay, so, uh, feel free to check out my next video cast, video cast number three, which will also be on chapter four. Have a good evening.